You're you're live, Ma. You're on. <laughs> hey, uh, hi. Well, here I am. It's Roseanne, and here's my podcast. Whatever. Okay, so um, first of all, I'm going to introduce uh, my first guest, or my own, whatever the guest. And um, you know, a lot of people are complaining because a lot of conservatives are getting kicked off of Twitter. You know, they're anybody who is talking about um, a certain 17th letter of the alphabet or or supporting the president of the United States during this insurrection, um, you're uh, not liked on Twitter. But that might be misinfo, misinfo, disinfo, because I have here as my guest today, a liberal voice who was kicked off of Twitter. So conservatives settle down, it's going both ways. And that person who was kicked off of Twitter is my guest, Larry Liberal. That's your handle on Twitter or was, right? It was until they kicked me off of it. They kicked me off because I was just too, too truthful. So you think Twitter is like censoring liberals too, as well as conservatives? I think what, well, yes. But what I think happens is if they see the word Trump in anything, they just kick you off. Even if you're anti-Trump? Yes, I think, I, I don't think some people are smart enough over there at Twitter to realize I am a screaming liberal. And I was just happened to be, you know, using Trump more than once in a, in a tweet and boom, pow, gone. So they don't like liberals who hate Trump now on Twitter. That's what I'm thinking. I think they just don't want the word to be seen because it goes into people's brains and they think Trump, Trump, you know, it just gets in their head. You know, that could very well be true. Now you're wearing the infamous pink pussy hat, aren't you? Yes, this is this is the the one the original. I got this several years ago. It's the exact same one that Alyssa Milano has. And what does that mean to you? I mean, you know, I'm I'm pretty much people think I'm a conservative, but I'm actually a revolutionary. Anyway, uh, conservatives aren't real sure why men go around wearing that pink hat. Would you explain what it means to you? This is a symbol that I am a resistor. I am a resistor to anything Trump. I, I want America back the way it was when Obama made America great. That's why I don't understand why Trump keeps saying, make America great again, because the only way that's going to happen is if Obama comes back. And so that's what that... Okay, I, I can understand your reasoning there, but what's that hat got to do with that? This oh, that's what the symbol. hat means? This oh, is the symbol. symbol. This so, is the symbol. Okay. Of what? Isn't it a vagina, a symbol of a vagina? They call it a pussy hat. Yes, but I, I am seeing, I am coming out of it. I am, I'm being birthed from this hat. Oh, so it's like the universal vagina of the universal mother giving birth to all thinking humanity in your mind? Exactly, exactly. I, we, we, when you wear this hat, you are in touch with the very beginnings that made you who you are. I, I can understand that being a deep spiritual, having deep spiritual meaning. Namaste. But you know, a lot of people who don't think like you think you look like you're um kind of occupied by de demonic marxist feminist thinking what do you think well of that? there there is nothing wrong with feminist thinking the feminist is what this whole thing you know the very first goddess was a feminist and we need to get back to the beginning the rules you know like Eve was in charge of Adam, and we need to get back to that. You think so? Well, don't you think? Don't you think that you know you were you were one of the original goddesses? That's when I fell in love with you, and you were you were such a revolutionary person. And and then then you know I don't know what happened. 
You fucked up. That's what happened. <laughs> you veered off. You, get, you gotta get back on message if you really want this fucking revolutionary for working people, you stupid motherfucker. Was that too was that rude? That was a little rude. You know, I'm not used I'm to sorry, that coming honey. out of a woman's mouth. Huh? That was that was just you know don't be so harsh. I like the Roseanne that was so tender. Well, why don't you have on a shirt? What was that? Why do you have no shirt on? Oh, I never wear a shirt. Never, never, never. Because shirts are racist. They are racist. Because this is the way I look at it. The white people came from Europe over to this country. And nobody wore shirts or clothes until the white people came here and said, oh, you must put clothes on. We're offended by your by your half nakedness and you, you're turning on our women and we don't like that. Yeah, that's on point. I definitely taught that. So that's why that's why I refuse to wear clothes most of the time. What about your tattoos? What do they symbolize? Those are living symbols you've carved into your flesh, right? Yes, they are. They're a symbol that I wasn't thinking very well, and I was drinking. <laughs> well, can we see one? <laughs> sure. One of what? I have a Wi-Fi Wi-Fi symbol because that's where most of my videos are put out to the world. My message goes out to the world right. through Wi-Fi. I and, love and that. Yeah, and I love to sing, so that's what this is. And then this over here is all of my dogs. These are my dogs. Oh, what were the dogs' names? Pork are chop, they alive? Applesauce, pork chop, applesauce, and moon pot. No, they, they, they've passed on, and that's why I had them tattooed on like that, because they were so important to my life. Everybody's dogs are important to them. I know. People are not they're not uh you know they make light of the human connection with animals don't they they do but have you ever had a dog look you right in the eye and know exactly like you lock eyes and you're like yes i understand i know exactly what you're feeling i have had that it's sort and of then it shits, and then it shits on the floor and so do you right yeah. after that right exactly and the dog looks at you like i'm not cleaning that up I have, there's no way I will step over <laughs> that all night long. Now, um, what in the hell are we going to do so people can talk to each other across these political lines, Larry? Well, I, I don't know. This has become so, so difficult now. You, you can't even have a normal conversation with somebody without injecting evil politics into it. You can say, ooh, this is one of the best coffees I've ever had. That's probably because it wasn't picked by Trump tards. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they just <laughs> Well, have you read my Starbucks tweets? I mean, <laughs> not my Starbucks tweets, but somebody else's Starbucks tweets? No, are they tweeting about Starbucks? Well, this one crazy old Jew lady on there, she's saying that Starbucks is the reason that this whole generation is all fucked up and they should think about that. Starbucks, the, the, uh, look at, let's talk about their symbol, Esther. That's Esther. Did you know that? A goddess. That's, that's Esther right there? Yeah. I did not know that. I just thought it was a mermaid that brought fresh water to the beans and made them grow. Maybe it is. I think it means something to everyone a little different. Well, she looks sleepy. She looks like she needs coffee. That's what I always thought that this was the symbol of like, ooh, I need to wake up. So I think- I think people? Starbucks is the center of all evil. I figured it out, Larry. What do you think? Have you ever been to a Starbucks bathroom? Oh my God, have you ever been in one? Yes, 
and and I I'm not sure where to set my cup. When I go into a Starbucks bathroom, I'm never sure where I should set my cup because I don't want to set it on the toilet. It may have like poop, poopy germs, and I don't want to set it on the sink because it you know it might be dirty. So I I just look around the room. A lot of times I set it on the changing table because I figure that's the cleanest thing in there. No, it ain't. That's where everybody's wiping up shit right there on the changing table. Have you seen these mothers? They don't clean up the the fucking changing table after they're done wiping their brat's shitty ass. They leave shit stains all over the fuck that one. I'm telling you, these mothers, you know, something we can both agree on both sides. These mothers, they got to take better care of their kids because they're not paying attention to their kids because they're on their goddamn devil-made iPhones and shit texting out fucking nude pictures of their fat ass. And then they count how many followers of people who love their cellulite. Get a fucking clue. Your kid is sticking his booger fingers in all the bread. Every time I go to the fucking uh, supermarket, it's a bitch on her fucking iPhone ignoring her brats and they got green snot in their nose and they're sticking their green snot fingers right to the bread on the hamburger buns and she's not saying nothing. And I feel compelled to go over there and whap them right upside the back of their fucking head. But then I realize once you hit kids, Larry, that you've already lost. So you've got to get control of them with just a look. You can't just hit them. That, that ain't right. Do you see what I'm saying? I I guess I do. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. I'm so scared now. I didn't want to go out of the house and get coffee or go to McDonald's or any of that kind of stuff. You should be that scared when you go at Starbucks. If you're a germaphobe, which I am, I'm now just like Howard Hughes. I never leave my room and no one can come in. But luckily now we have the COVID, which I love because it's for the first time in my life, I can live the way I really want to live. I think God made COVID just for me. Preach it, sister. I totally agree with you about the COVID. It really hasn't changed anything about my life except I just get... uh, a little more something delivered to the house because a lot of people are like i don't i can't go out i can't do and i'm like i never went out anyway i don't like to go out so thank you covid yeah right but then you know your delivery person has shit on his hands do you notice how many people walk around scratching their butts that work in food service is that a requirement they do it and they don't wash their hands because I look at them in the bathroom where it has a big sign, wash your hands, employees, you must wash your hands. And they don't do it because they're resisting. Well, the one thing I did notice, I mean, it's weird that you have to have signs that say employee must wash hands because that should be like just basic common sense. Am I right? Yeah, you shouldn't have to have a sign above the uh, sink. Right. But if, I if mean, they, they have probably the can't sign- read anyway. I was going to say, if they have the sign... Hey, did you notice that the baristas are the Antifas? They're the same fucking people? Who is? The baristas at Starbucks and Antifa. They're the same motherfuckers. Well, they are. I mean, Antifa is 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 like Spanish for barista, I think. That's I'm what I sure. think. That's why I call them the barista Antifa. There you go, sister. See, I knew you and I could agree on something. Because... And they're also kindergarten teachers. That's the problem right there. We need better teachers in America. That's the problem. We need people like me to go in and teach our children respect. Because I respect everything and everybody. And I would Do you think to... children should be forced to see a half-naked man come in there with long hair and a pink hat? Well, I, yes, because, (laughs) (laughs) good one, Steve. Hey, this is my old pal, Steve McGrew. We grew up in Denver together on stage. (laughs) Well, you went through some fucking changes, didn't you? Boy, I have been through some changes. I have been up, down. Ripped apart, ripped a new one. Uh, yeah, but it's it's. I remember that heat. one time it was a two o'clock show there at the Comedy Works where you pulled down your pants because that bitch was in the audience saying, um, "I just have to say this, not as a woman or a, ge- a gender female or whatever, but as a fellow comic which has no gender." Am I right? 
Yes. Yes. So yeah. you get up there on the table and she's going, you, you probably, your dick is two inches long because that's the only thing that feminists <laughs> can come up with as a joke because they're fucking brain dead, fucking robots, oh. servants of males oh. and male oh. thinking. Well. Do you believe there's such a thing as male thinking? Uh, no, I don't. I just think there, there's right and wrong thinking. And I, I just think yeah. that we're... We're we're programmed, you know, to be hunter gatherers and that kind of stuff. And and I, I've never figured out why we why we want to go against nature so bad. You know, you know what I mean? Like a little a little boy is going to pick up a stick and and pretend it's a gun, even if he's never played with a gun before. What if he had never seen any movies? He might not. Oh well, that's true. I thought about that pick up maybe, anything that looks like a penis he's gonna pick up anything that's <laughs> longer than it is wide that that's the truth of it <laughs> well yeah i well i never thought of it that way i've never thought that i'm gonna walk through i know room. because you have male thinking so you prove my point anyway steve <laughs> yes so you go she's like you have a two inch penis Peeny. 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 Is that what she said? Peeny. Peeny. I like the word ween. Ween? Is it signified? Yeah. <laughs> ween. <laughs> <laughs> bow. You must bow to the ween. Yeah. Halloween. <laughs> God save the ween. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> um, but so you get up there on the table and you go, yeah. And so you pulled down your pants. You were drunk and shit. Were you on coke too? Oh, probably not. But I was drunk. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's been. I have now not had a cocktail in uh, what, 30, 33 years. Are you shitting me? No, uh, uh I've been, I've been all nice and sober for thirty three years. What's that like? It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. You, you, you have to live with your own thoughts. Ew. Ew. Yeah. I feel, remember when George McKelvey used to say, you know, the bad thing about a hangover you, you, not drinking is that's the best you're going to feel for the rest of the day. Remember that? Yeah. 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 I just wake up feeling that all 24 hours a day. Hungover? Yeah. Because you can't. <laughs> Ew, that's awful. Yeah. You better start drinking again. <laughs> well, I've got look for all this soap life got you, Steve. You're in a fucking room that you can't leave and you're broke. Give it up. <laughs> I can't work. COVID's got me just sitting in a house pretending I'm a, a man in a pussy hat. And you're kicked off of fucking Twitter. Twitter. So there's you you can't make a living now. Do you have a I YouTube can't. channel where they pay you two cents for every Hundred thousand they rake in over your dead fucking corpse. How do you like that, Rosie? How do you like the fact that your videos can get so many views, and then you check your analytics, and you're like, "I made six dollars this month." Ha <laughs> ha! Talk about fucking fascism. We just want to own our work, you fuckers. Can't you let us own our fucking work, you goddamn greedy motherfuckers? You've got billions of dollars. You could you could make a pool of the shit you, you know, the shit they buy their fucking fourth wife, the endangered species stoles they buy for their fourth fucking wife could feed the whole fuck every hungry on on earth of fucking billionaires. And I exactly. and I'm a conservative. Kiss my fucking ass. Do you agree with me? I totally agree with you. I Are you a conservative this. then, not a liberal? Well, this guy, Larry, is a liberal. This guy loves Trump. <laughs> well, how can you pretend to be that guy then? Well, All you I had to be that guy sometime in your life to come up with the shit you come up with. Well, he here's exactly what I do. I, I think like a conservative, and then I completely turn it around so what would be the opposite of sanity that's what that 
And that's how I come up with any of the liberal stuff. Like, it's all Trump's fault that the Kardashians got canceled. They were getting better ratings than any of his speeches. That's the problem right there. Well, that could be, though. I think it's because Kanye, they say it's because Kanye runs for president. You know, when I tried to run for president is when I got, you know, they didn't pick up my pilot. They want, They don't want you doing that. They don't want you being conservative? No, running for president. Oh, yeah. They don't want that at all. I, I they don't, they don't that, want any any um, cultural force that has more than two followers going political. Well, I, I had a bunch of, telling me, bunch of people telling me that Larry should have run for president this year, like Pat Paulson did years ago, that I should have made a big You campaign. should. That's what I yeah. did, and it was a blast. You learn a lot, too. Like, you learn that you cannot get on any ballots unless you fucking grease about 400,000 palms. Well, how, how, much was, how much was that greasing costing? Money, green. Money, you know, money has to change hands if you want a revolution. I'm, it's, it, I think it's going to be coming toward a, a revolution revolution, which is kind of scary. I, I, I'd rather have a cultural revolution, but I'm very much afraid that we, we've gone too too far apart. Like family We definitely have gone together. too far apart. we got to start bringing it together. So you're sort of, I think you're in a way, you're um, personifying that because you're not mean to liberals. You're no, kind I've to them. I just try to, to, to make fun, just enough fun that they can go, well, maybe he's right. Maybe that is a little bizarre. Maybe I shouldn't act like that in public. Maybe maybe I shouldn't walk right up to a cop and scream in his face and not expect to get maced in the eyeballs. <laughs> Why don't they know that? Well, they're trying to get maced though. I mean, they want it. They want that. They want that. Uh, what do you call it? Clip. They want yeah, the, the clip viral of the video. cops reacting. Yeah. They want that viral video. Of, yeah, they, of the they're baiting people. Both sides yeah. are baiting people to get the sound bite. Well, I just, I'm, I'm so one. how did we officials get so far, like Portland officials get so far up that they don't care about protecting their city? How are they acting like, we need to get laws against rubber bullets. And, you know, how, how what are the cops supposed to do after that? Well, they don't like the cops. Hello? How come nobody gets that? And they want to take people's guns away at the same time. Figure that, that don't take a lot of common sense to figure out. There's right. something, some, you know, and they're letting dangerous criminals out of prison and setting them on people and they're bringing people in from all over the world. And where do you think those people go? Well, they don't go to Beverly Hills. No, I'll tell you that much. You know, they come to uh, our town. They go where the working people are. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, that's and the poor. I, you know where they're really going now? They're going in St. Louis right now. They're they're going what, to St. Louis. Is that like what's in what's in St. Louis? What's what's attracting them there? Oh, uh, there's a lot of kids who need help and are desperate. And that's where they like to go. Well, what do you speaking of kids? What do you think about what's going on with this whole Netflix thing with the with the the pedo cuties movie and all that? Well, I think they're trying to program us to accept something re, that's repugnant to us, and I think they get a thrill out of doing it. They get a big laugh. See where we'll. You know, we're just rats. We're lab rats. And they're the social engineers. And they're well, both I, parties, too. That's why I can't stand that people think it's actually one party doing it. That's how they keep us all crazy. We, I'm just surprised to see how many people like, like Larry will just step up and try to defend Netflix. You know, like, it's so obvious what it is. But yet, you, you know, they're like, oh, Netflix is just trying to, you know, to, to make people more open-minded, trying to show what's, you know, what's happening in the world today. 
Well, I have a lot to say on that subject, Larry, but you know, people don't listen to fucking thing I say, so I'm like, why waste my breath? I put my ass out there one too many times for no fucking good reason, and nobody defended me at all, so fuck them. I defended you. I was I was definitely behind you on, on, on Facebook and Twitter. Do you have a Facebook? Yeah, I've got my I've got my own Steve Mudflat McGrew on Facebook. And I was I was That's how I like know you is as Steve. Boy, we saw a lot of the birth of this whole new comedy thing, right? Do you do you see there's that many funny new people? You seen any new funny kids? Uh very few. There's there's one or two that I that I really like. But uh, for the most part, none of the new guys have actual jokes or punchlines. It's almost all this, don't you hate it? Don't you hate Trump? Don't you hate this thing? And there's no actual joke punchlines anymore. Yeah, I noticed that too. There's not a lot of jokes. Well, I think part of it is people are afraid to uh, make fun of anything because then you're attacked. You know, it's the whole cancel culture. Oh, how dare you make fun of, you know, grandmas because you wouldn't do that if your grandma died that kind of thing it, you think they're yeah they don't want people to laugh do they no because l- laughter creates endorphins and endorphins makes you happy and they don't want you happy they want you controlled what do you think of this nail polish, Steve? Isn't it cool? I got it on the internet. It's flat black. I love it. It's whenever it's you talk, I zone out and just look at my fingernails and go, Jesus Christ, those look so good. They are they are gorgeous nails. They're gonna be perfect for Halloween. Getting ready for the ween. The ween bow to the ween. Remember, my show on Halloween was the most important show of the year. I was going to go there. I thought you're, when you had your show and you did the Halloween episodes, those were the best. Those were, those were, they were the most important. We always joke that that's why the family was poor because they spent all their money on Halloween. (laughs) 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 That's why none of the kids could go to college and that thing because they spent. $150,000 $150,000 on Halloween every year. <laughs> but yeah, they were the you most just, important show because that's where I really laid some shit in there. Well, it, well, both both the sitcom and the talk show. The talk show had great Halloween yeah. episodes. I just love the ween. <laughs> I've heard that. You've heard that about her. That's what she said. That's still the greatest joke of all time, isn't it? That's what she said. That's the great. Anyone will laugh if you end any sentence with that, right? Anything, anything, and that that's going to be one of those that just lives forever. I hope it does, but now they're saying that's transphobic. Oh, well, which? How many genders are there now? Have we have we come to the conclusion of exactly how many? Because I know that Facebook was well, putting like 50 There's only one. That's the joke. <laughs> to me. There's only one? Yeah. I'm going to check to see. <laughs> I had to check it. <laughs> oh, but I mean, God it's birth. a two-sided coin, a male and a female. That's one gender. Oh yeah, I I agree. You know, when you got to figure out what you are, there's a, a problem. I mean, a real problem. Yeah. Because you can't look down. If you can't look down and go, "What do I have? Where do I need to go pee?" Then there's a problem. Yeah, there's a problem where you don't know where to pee. But men, I don't know why they have any problem whatsoever, as they just pee anywhere and on anything. Did you see that picture of Kanye West peeing on his Grammy? Oh, you can't no, go on for real? Yeah, it's in that's... the toilet, and he's peeing this ark that's like a guy who's had a, his kidneys full for three days and held it back. And he's like about 10 feet away, and it's this 
he or else he has a machine but it's this huge steady stream of yellow all over his grammy kanye oh. West. oh no you know he's having a total breakdown and i am totally with him I, i've had breakdowns like that i mean the guy he's just a very funny guy and nobody gets that he's funny and it's driving him nuts and i noticed dave Chappelle ran over there to be with him which is good because Dave gets funny, but uh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. a that's I'm a big fan of Dave Chappelle. I did Dave, Dave every once in a while, you know, I, I'll go, okay, I don't agree, but for the most part, he keeps things really funny, whether it offends you or not. And I like that, yeah, I do too. Did you He's see his last funny. special? Oh, yeah, it was great. The last one, what did what kind of bits was he doing in that? That was that was all the ones that uh, the alphabet people and uh, yeah, that was brilliant. That was a brilliant piece, wasn't it? Writing was incredible. it was. He's a great writer. He's one well. Of the how guys many times have you been married since we hung out? You've been married uh, twice, right? <laughs> Since we hung out, uh, uh, twice. The, I'm on my I'm on my fourth one now. It's like the last one. This will never happen again. <laughs> You're on your fourth. I am too. Are you? Congratulations. Yeah. The fourth, you kind of might. Maybe you get it right. Yeah. Yeah, I think we. You know, you always say strike three. You're out. And then yeah. So you start so you start over and you go, okay, I I know what I did wrong. I'm not doing that at all anymore. What did you do wrong? Uh pretty much woke up and <laughs> spoke <laughs> and had my own opinion and uh you know, just stuff like that. So how do you traverse being a married man with this wife? How do you get, how do you get through? Um, well, did you just say one, yes, dear, a lot? No, it's actually, we're, we're very good at compromise. Uh, before there wasn't a whole lot of compromise and she and I both have uh, a thing about, you know, you know, I'll, I'll do this with you and you do that with me or, or we'll, we'll eat what you want tonight, tomorrow night we'll go have what I want it's never like arguing about stuff it's just taking turns you know now if I told you that my premise is this is what I think that what's wrong is that men have been severely mentally castrated and they no longer have the balls to know how to or, or the brains to know how to go home and to their woman the woman in their life, whether it be their daughter, their mother, their aunt, their sister, any woman in their life, and politely, gen genteelly, and accurately and lovingly make themselves heard and say the following, bitch, you got a STFU. Because <laughs> that's what needs to happen, Steve. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I don't know if you, I'm sure you do, uh, but... A lot of these uh, old shows are coming back on TV because of streaming. And you just watch some of the shows like The Real McCoys or Father Knows Best. I love them. Oh, yeah. They were great. They were great shows. And you and you realize how the couples, the dynamics worked in those shows. And it's not it's not the, anymore of the guy's really dumb. The, the husband's dumb and the kids are smarter than he is. And and it's kind of it's kind of weird to see that time that time change, you know, just in a few years. Yeah, I think I'm responsible for fucking that up. Because when oh. I grew up, it made me sick to see all those dads that fucking were, you know, I looked at the men in my family, I'm like, these motherfuckers are nothing like father knows best. Are you shitting me? They're the biggest idiots ever. And it, if they'd only listen to the my mom and grandma, they wouldn't be in this mess over and over and over. I saw the evidence right. of these fucking idiots and everyone has to kiss their ass and pretend like they're smart and they're not. All they care about is their ween. Well, that's, that's important, you know? 
Yeah, but of just, course, just, but for God's sake, let women's common sense uh, run the day while you're out there, uh, you know, with your chronic masturbation and such. Yeah. Don't yeah, try yeah. to bring that you know, shit in here and tell me that's common sense because it ain't. Well, on some of those shows, I'm you not going to go on my way to the laundromat and stop off to have illicit sex with somebody. For fuck's <laughs> sake. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, you are right. But but don't you think that a lot of those shows they showed the balance because the the the, the father was being stern, maybe stern the kids. You get to think a little hard on the beaver and they'd be like, Yeah, you're right. Maybe he's learned his lesson. You know, there was a balance, the yin and yang, you got that. That's true. Of course, everybody always says that you're being a little hard on the beaver and loves that because it's dirty. <laughs> Everyone loves I that. I think that's why. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was, those were they were kind of correct elements because I do think the father should be stern and he should be stern to his wife, too, and say, honey, you really talk a lot of hate with your mouth and you think you're being nice, but you're not. And so you need to sit down and put some love in there and zip it. Because have you noticed how these bitches are out there and all they do is talk hate? Have you noticed that? Hey, yeah, yeah. They're 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 jacked up on pumpkin spice lattes and they're just from Starbucks. Hate from Starbucks. From Starbucks. I'm telling you, there's a lot of snaky snakes over there at Starbucks. Well, what would you think if, if one of the magazines started to try to write articles again for women that were more like the, those 1950s articles about, you know, how to, how to make your man happy with each dinner? You know, uh, when your man comes I know, home, but now, you know, they don't allow any, re you know, uh, I guess the term in, in their mind is cis women to write for cis women. They, they, they have to have trans women writing for cis women that's the rule now in the women's magazines ah, i didn't know that of course you what? did it <laughs> of course you did it well what do you what do you think about this i just saw this last night uh because i've been watching reruns of heart to heart and they're gonna they're going to remake heart to heart with a gay couple hmm do you, do you think that show will work? Don't get me started on Natalie Wood. I thought Wood was supposed to float. <laughs> that was the that was the best awkward pause since Craig Ferguson. I was being a real libtard for a minute. <laughs> I still got it in me, Steve. Yeah, once it's there, it's there, you know. Well, I think it's good that we all want to be elevated enough to recognize hate speech. But boy, we sure make a lot of mistakes. And so, you know, that's the problem. We need better definitions of what it is. Like when you what? say kill the president, that's kind of hate speech, you think? Right. Or, or when you're protesting outside a hospital in Los Angeles where two cops have been shot yelling, I hope you die. That's hate speech, right? I think so. I think it qualifies. It's on the list for sure. Well, what actually is hate speech? Because, you know, I, I know as, as Larry, the character, it's when someone every, I fucking hate, is, hate is speaking. Speech. It's when someone I hate is speaking. Someone I disagree with has said something. No, That's somebody hate speech, right? I hate. Somebody I hate is speaking. That shit needs to stop. Now you're talking about why do I hate them? Why do I hate them? I don't. I don't want them to say anything. They need. They need no influence on anybody. They need to be quiet because they're going to infect somebody's thinking. No, I think that people are afraid that they really mean to kill them. They think all really? oh, those words mean to kill me. Yeah, I think people are afraid that those those words are like, you know, pre-genocidal. 
and they feel really threatened and afraid by them, triggered, if you will. Now, is this because we have stopped telling our kids little simple rhymes like sticks and stones may make my, break my bones, but words will never hurt me? It's because, the Steve, I'm going to repeat myself again. Till you are indoctrinated into the proper way of thinking, my friend. Now, receive my transmission here, Steve. Hear me. These moms are not raising their kids right. They're not even paying any fucking attention to the little fucking snot-nosed brats. They're letting them run wild. They give them a trophy for it. There's never any fucking consequences. They never say, you don't talk to me that way. <laughs> well, I guess they do do that. But mixed in with all that is like they're 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 doing a lot of I think when when you ignore your kids and then they go out of control, what you do is finally snap, then you start beating on them. And I think and that's too late. Yeah, it's way too late. Then you made well, a barista. <laughs> Stop raising baristas. Well, I've mm -hmm. said this for years because I, I, I hate the McDonald's playground, the whole playground, it, the encased thing. Remember, remember when you used to go get coffee? Wait, you used to go get coffee and there was a kid in there who really wanted a job. Yeah, it wasn't like that. It wasn't the child of a trust funder that said, you got to get a job if I'm going to pay for that Lamborghini one more time. You used to go in there and the kid was like, good afternoon. What would you like? May I help you? Yes. And then they were like, here, I left some room for your milk. And they were proud of their job instead of yeah, like, yeah. did you just say, you know, getting all uptight and shit because they're, you know, they got to work for the Lamborghini. Yeah. Well, I, I think that same thing. The old days when you used to go to like fast food restaurants, people got those jobs and they were proud to get them and they wore the little paper hats and and they were like thanks for coming we'll see you, you know next time and now i feel like they're like my dad made me get this job i spit in your burger i think they shit in them oh oh i know they don't wash their hands we're back to that and why i never leave my room it's a howard it's time for the howard hughes treatment steve just never put shoe boxes on our feet and pee in jars. Oh my God. I caught my kid peeing in jars. One of my kids, he was Which storing one? it in his, he was storing it in his closet up at college. <laughs> okay. I now got I got one, one kid that went to college. Yeah. Cause I only got one that went to college. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally. <laughs> the one he that went to college too. was the one that couldn't have a baby. No, I hope we don't have any babies. God, grandmas are the worst telling their kids, you got to get a baby, you got to get a baby. So they can ignore it while they're on their fucking phone, you know, and it's got every kind of COVID disease and they don't even get it tested. And it's sticking its snotty fingers in the buns at Hamburger World, whatever. Cell, cell phones have been the worst thing for parenting. I I, I, I uh -huh. have to agree with you. When I see people just sitting there on, on their phones and the kid running wild, and you're the one like, do you not see your kid? We're looking at your kid. Get your face out of your phone long enough to see what your kid is doing. You know, I'm a nosy old Jew, which is so awesome. That's all I've ever wanted to be in my life. And so uh -huh. I'm living my dream. And so, like, I will say it because I'm one of those women that just would say it because it needs to be said. So I will say, you know, excuse me, <clears throat> do you see what your child is doing? Are you watching him at all? Where's the camera? I'll say that to him. And I also want to tell women this. Don't put your hands on your kids if you have that little control over them. That is a, a sin. And you're a bad mother. What you need to do is control those kids long before they're out of control. And you do it by, and if you don't know how, model it. You use a look, and here it is. Ooh, those are the eyes right there. That'll make a kid and that means stop. tighten up. 
and you don't put oh, your I hands remember. on those kids, right? You remember that look? Oh, I totally remember that look. My mom could, it, it, I had done something horribly wrong to her and her soul when she'd give me that look. It made me, it made me hate myself. <laughs> when did you get that look? Did you get it a lot? I got it. I got it a lot. When I was a kid, I got it a lot. I got the look or I got my middle name. When they use all three names, you you knew it, it was over. You got the look first, and then you got the names, and then you got the belt. Oh, you got the belt? Did your dad give you the belt? Oh, yeah. I got the belt. That's that's one of the things I thought should be one of the, the – uh, a kid's horror movie. Somebody should write a horror movie just called The Belt. What did your dad do when he when he belted you? Well, he would pull it like a like a sword. I don't know understand how he could unbuckle his how he could unbuckle his buckle and he just pulled it actually like a like a pirate would pull a sh 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 whoosh and it made like a like the sword leaving the 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 holder shoot and he didn't even have to spank you and you were crying. But did he spank you? Oh, yeah. You would say, you put your hands behind your, and cover your ass with your hands and say, I'll never do it again. I swear I'll never do it again. And he would say, I know you're not, and I'm about to show you why you're not going to do it again. And then did he do your hands? Did he get your hands? Yes, he would hit our hands. And then our fingers would be so fucked up we couldn't hold a pencil at school. And now we're failing in school. So now we're getting a spanking for fed school. It's a horrible <laughs> circle. Did your mom set you up for spankings? Yes, I was. The, well, my mom, my mom liked to spank us too. I, I think they oh. enjoyed spanking us. I, there's something <laughs> my mom. My mom whipped us with a, a fly swatter. That was her favorite choice, uh, weapon of choice, was a fly swatter. Did you ever get spanked with a fly swatter? Oh, yeah. So oh, the plastic you know. ones. The rattan yes. ones sting, but the plastic ones, they, they diffuse the pain a little. Yeah, but, well, they made that slapping noise. The, the noise was yeah. just as scary as the pain, but that plastic was... Yeah. That thing, you hear it, and ah! <laughs> but uh, like, did you have to pull your pants down to get a spanking? Uh, only from my uncle, and I always thought that was weird. It no, I'm kidding. Weird. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you have to throw a creepy uncle joke in every once in a while. Everybody's got one, don't they? <laughs> Hey, Joe Biden's like a creepy uncle, you think? Snipping at your Is hair. It? Oh, snip. Explain that to now me. Now you're Larry now. I'm... Now you got to go back to Larry because you got the outfit. Now, are you, Larry, what do you think? Aren't you embarrassed that Biden is sniffing these people? I think that he is just letting them know he appreciates good hygiene. I think that he, more people, if he would just say, Mm, gee, your hair smells terrific. People would be happier. <laughs> wouldn't you like so, someone to wouldn't you like someone to sniff one of your body parts and say, Oh, you smell so clean today? Well, I guess if I but what if I I don't know if I wasn't in the mood. Well, it would cheer you up. But see, that's part of the problem today. But women, it goes against women, the conditioning we've been taught because we've told our kids, don't, you know, this is your body and your personal space and no one is to come in there and touch you or, uh, you know, anything that you don't want. See, we told our kids that and then a guy in authority just goes right in there for the sniff. What are they supposed to think? Well, when you go right in for the sniff, just when you just go right in for it, that's, that's bad. You have to. It's have creepy, to right? It a, yes, that's a little creepy. You have to seduce the sniff. You have to. You have to work your way in a little bit, a little touch, a little, a little closer, and then a sniff. But just don't go right in for it. Yeah. First, you say like, "Do you mind if I? Would you mind if I 
touched your shoulder with my hand. That's what they teach them in school. Right. Someone's we supposed to, to, like somebody's ever going to do that. We need to like teach a perp, people. Like a big perp's going to come up. Do you mind if I touch you with my, I mean, perps don't act the way they teach us perps act, do they? No, we need to teach the art of snipduction. Oh, but the, we shouldn't be teaching that to kids. Now you're talking about Netflix type shit. No, 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 no. I'm talking about just being able to make somebody feel good about themselves. A, 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 a little sniff, a little smile, a little, a little gentle touch on the shoulder. That's, that's all that it is. Remember, remember you learned to, to touch somebody, to let them know, like when you're speaking, to put your hand on them, to let, you, let them know there was a contact, that you were understanding each other? Yeah, those are back in the human times. We've gone beyond the human, do you think? We've gone to some other level. We're not even human anymore, are we? Well, I I agree with that. I sometimes I'm I'm scared about about how the human race will continue because I think people are afraid to to be seduced. You know, the old days you you'd say you'd be trying to seduce somebody. You might go to a club and try to try to find somebody, but now you're like no means no. When I'm and I said no, so don't ever touch me again. Well, remember the old days? You're like, well, let me buy you another drink. Let me get you one more drink. I don't need another drink. Oh yes, you do. Let me get you another drink. <laughs> remember those good old days? That's how the human race continued. Yeah. Of course, you know my boyfriend always says, you know, he found this big ugly. You know, Johnny. He found this big ugly ass old horny toad in the uh, cat box um you know the thing where the cat stuff is uh yeah. big old ugly horny toad was living in there with her two kids and he liberated them took them to the pond he said they were so happy because they were living in you know litter that was all moldy and shit but he goes i guess some frog got drunk and fucked her and she got two <laughs> so, I guess a lot of guys have to, you know, a lot of both gender have to be drunk in order to have sex, don't they? I think so. I, I think you have to be under the influence to, to do something like that. But but don't you don't you think that we, we've gone past we, we've made little boys afraid of, of girls. And so now they don't they don't want to do anything. They're not asking them out because they don't want to be accused of something that they didn't do. And if that's what my son said he learned in college. See, he said he learned pretty much everything is rape. And so don't even talk to him. And if you and if you're scared of that, if you, you have to take it all the way back, if you, when you're a little boy, you want to get a car mm -hmm. because you mm -hmm. want to want the freedom and you might go might pick up somebody when you get the car, you got to have a job. So you get a job so you can afford a car to get a girlfriend. But now, if you can't have a girlfriend because you're afraid they're going to accuse you of something, I might as well just sit home and play video games. See how ugly this has gotten? Yeah, I agree. It's all socially engineered. And then the free porn on the internet. So, you know, since I said all they cares about is their wean anyways, that's, there's no reason to leave home ever. Exactly. To get a job. Like, to get a job. It's like, right. Free porn. I don't understand how any of the porn sites stay in business because I'm not. Pay Why would you pay for something when all you need is 30 seconds of the free one? And it's, uh, I'm done. So, are you over your voracious sexual urges so that you can be married to one woman? Uh, I think. Because you know you when, cheated on that one wife that I liked. Which one? Now, you the know first what? one. I you're can't remember her name. But you was cheating so on her trouble. all the time. What? Well, you're gonna get you're gonna get me in trouble. Mm. No, Sorry. this is um, this this is a uh, uh, I think what happens is you, when you find someone you really care about and you really trust and you really respect no it isn't that it's when you finally care about yourself enough 
to is attract that what it is? a part yeah to attract a partner who really cares about you that's what it is well you might you might be right because i yeah. I, I i have uh found with, with with my wife janet that we are totally compatible about stuff we, we we ask each other questions we respect each other we don't purchase things without like saying hey i'm thinking about doing this what do you think if there's there's no there's no just selfishness in this relationship so you must have ditched your selfish habits i think so i think once you stop Good drinking you. you know for me you, you stop uh -huh. drinking and you stop thinking about you know how can i make myself happy you know yeah well i'd like to ask you a hundred embarrassing questions about our past <laughs> but a hundred embarrassing to get questions in trouble <laughs> that was a long time ago when we were comics in denver wasn't it oh it was you know that was some of the best uh, i was talking to michael Florwax the other day uh, oh i love and, him so and much he was he's all crazy is he insane yet he is he's he's back to pretty much normal again he he, oh, good. he had a uh, he had a couple rough trips around the sun but he's he's I back he did. And, yeah but he was yeah, he went out the there. That, yeah, he was. But Mike was reminding me of when we used to do that. Was it called the Hungry Farmer or White Farmer? Or was the it, Hungry Farmer? The Hungry Farmer. Yeah. And us Tuesday I, yeah, nights. That's when you and, yeah, and you and I did a thing out there called like a he said she said show that one yeah. time. Yeah, remember that? That was fun at the Hungry Farmer. Free drinks. It was. It was. We got we got Very paid in food. Oh hell yes, that was good food too. Back in the days when food was food. What well, you ever have? I don't mean asking? to embarrass these baristas at Starbucks. A lot of them are lovely people. I never go in there. You know why? I hate the taste of Starbucks coffee. I don't even think it's coffee. I don't like it at all. And Starbucks, when I was doing this thing, they wouldn't give me no free coffee uh, to, you know, for people that were doing some civil protesting over here against Monsanto. They wouldn't give us, so that's when I knew they were in bed with Monsanto. But the other coffee shops around town did give us free coffee. But Starbucks, you know, they're a corporation, so they're not going to give nothing for free yeah math major major cut i i actually try to go to coffee shops that are the little mom and pops or the little yeah. the little small ones with you know but the furniture doesn't match those kind of places well because they don't have all the needles and poop in the bathroom that's why i go for a bathroom i'll eat subpar food if they got a clean bathroom don't you <laughs> I've noticed that in our conversation, the clean bathrooms are very important to you. The I can't take the poopy germ shit and not in a COVID thing. Look at my arm, Steve. I want to get plastic surgery here. Look at this here. It's real old lady arm, bingo wings. Look at that. You know, if you were a there. teacher and writing on the blackboard, you would erase it while you were writing. Two for one, yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. I could get twice as much undone. It's really amazing how old we are. We're old. Old comics. Aren't we funnier than all these youngsters? Well, yeah, because we have life experience to talk about. Real life experience. I, I worked a club not long ago, well, before COVID, and the club owner actually told me that he wished he could hire only everybody over 40 because he said everybody over 40 makes everybody laugh and all the 20 something comics only seem to make themselves laugh <laughs> that's true huh some of them are funny because, i've seen you know, a couple all, good funny ones yeah i well i have too but but you know you could relate to that they're they're talking about hey did you see the episode of the kardashians or did you you know does your yeah. does your cell phone do this does your you know I know, I know. They're like, they got a really small bubble they're in, the youngsters. Yeah. They don't yeah. get to make fun of everything like we got to make fun of God. We got to make fun of everything, didn't we? Well, we made fun of God and look what he did to us. 
That's true. <laughs> I gotta you say, yeah, up. you're right on that. <laughs> but I mean, we could make fun of the president. We could be doing Nancy Pelosi jokes, but I'm af- even afraid to do Nancy Pelosi jokes. Are you? Yeah, I. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I. You know, I, I've gotten so scared that I, I double. I, I. I'm just. I'm afraid to put stuff out sometimes because I, I don't know if this is gonna push piss off the the new Twitter uh, censor person or the new Facebook. Before you just said what you wanted to say and put it out there. And now you're second guessing yourself going, is this going to get me kicked off? Yeah. Is this going to get you know what they did? They hired Jim Carrey, who is like a vicious Trump hater. They hired him to do Joe Biden on SNL. I wonder what that's going to be like. How's he going to fucking make Biden look good? It's going to be as horrible as Alec Baldwin's Trump. But the only way he can do Biden is to make him look like a senile old man. And how is that going to be funny? That's what I'm saying. How's he going to do it? There'll be a lot of this, like, head shaking and ooh, ooh. No, because he has to make Biden look good. That's his job because he hates Trump. So he has to make Biden look like... You know, he's got to make his job is make people vote for Biden. Well, how can you make Biden look good and then make it even appear to be Biden? You know, because the, the character has got to be. And That's funny. So he's got to make it think... funny, too. Yeah. Well, the Saturday Night Live, they stopped doing that a while back. What did you think of Alec Baldwin doing Trump? It became uh, like uh, just horrible. In the first couple, you thought, okay, this is kind of cute and um, amusing, and then, it, but then he just kept sticking out. He's, you know, that became his Trump. Was just, let me just stick my lips out and talk like this. I'm just gonna, I'm, look at me, I'm Donald Trump. Yeah, like you're doing right there. That that you could have done Trump. Just put on a, a Trump wig. Look at me, I'm Donald Trump. How do you how do you talk to people when they say that Trump has not done anything? You know, like I'm not but he's not done he hasn't done anything. He's screwed up the country. He's like how do you explain to people that Trump really has done things and he's not as bad as Rachel Maddow told you he was? Well, on Twitter I do it. I used to do, I used to try to do it wittily with a little joke. Uh Uh-huh. And then I full body press slammed, you know, hey, idiot. Hey, you fucking idiot. You know, uh, but like, well, uh, yeah. And then, and then I go, yeah, I especially hated what he did to Libya and Haiti. But they don't even get what you're talking about. So why, I think, you know, why bother? But, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, boy, I hated it when Trump, uh, you know, signed the NDAA, which pretty much killed comedy. I hated when Trump, um, you know, spied on everybody who in the whole fucking world who, uh, you know. Yeah. Was exercising their constitutional rights. I hate when he did that. I mean, they don't even know, they don't even know what reality was before Trump. And they've been prevented from seeing it. In fact, it's, you can't, you're not allowed to see what was really going on in our country. And they've censored all that. You know, they don't want nobody to know what was going on and why Chicago was the way Chicago was. They don't want nobody to know that. Yeah, right. And, and, and the thing, and you know, the Los Angeles was based in Illinois, and it had a lot of Chicago politics in it. So people should watch that again and see, see what I was saying then. Well, people just don't want; they don't want the truth and reality. You can't, you can't say, "Hey, well, they don't know what it all, is." All these shootings in Chicago, and you don't care about that, but you care about, you know, what the one person. Well, it's not even that. It's like. Uh, it's mind control. It's a hub of mind control, Chicago. 
Chicago is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Leftist mind control. Hell yeah. The University of Chicago. You should Google it. There's a lot going on there. <clears throat> Well, I know it's the home. Chicago is the home of all the uh, the talk shows that, you know, all the Jerry Springers and all of that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. It's a huge media complex. I, I thought about moving there, moving my show there, too. But, you know, they didn't want to do it. But, uh, hey, did you like it when Oprah fell over when she was talking about balance? Did you? I knew you. Uh, everybody laughed at that, right? I had it on loop. I had it just over <laughs> and she'd spin, fall, stand up, spin, fall. It was awesome. But talking about balance, <laughs> was that like, was that like God just going? <laughs> yes. Yes. Karma is weird, isn't it? It is. Well, for those of us that for 20 years were like going, you know, Oprah, Oprah isn't what she appears to be. Oprah is pretending. Oprah, it was so refreshing to finally see the real Oprah come out now. You know, everyone's like, wow, she is not as nice as we thought we, you know, no, she never was as nice as you thought she was. Well, I mean, what gets me about all that is that people actually would think that a human being was all good or all bad. I mean, nobody is. I mean, what's wrong with people to think that? Uh, of course, she's done a lot of incredibly wonderful things, as well as some not so smart things. But nobody's, what do they think? I mean, talk about swallowing the 10 yards of shit with both hands. Nobody's well, the same all thing. good or all bad. It's the same thing that's happening with Ellen right now. You know, everyone was so like, Ellen is so nice, but also, no, Ellen's the devil. A lot of people do think Ellen's the devil. But, you know, she's done a lot of good things, you know, some stupid things. Nobody's yeah. all good or bad, right? You got to do what you got to do if you're going to be on TV. TV is the bad thing, not who's on it. Don't you think? Yeah, because you got to play the game to, to get there mm -hmm. and, and stay there. You've got you to play the by the rules of the people that own and run it. That's what's good about what you're doing now. And I think good about what you know with with streaming tv is that people can do their own shows like this and and find an audience without having to sell their soul to you know viacom or something well you know of course now looking back i in hindsight i say well you know they they have you know uh the right to broadcast what they want to broadcast so you know it's their right and you know i was i was kind of like one of those people going up and screaming in the top space you know i attempted power or spit in its eye or whatever so you know i had to pay the price so you know what, what i mean yeah well when do, when do you think uh, or can you pinpoint your exact moment and for you when you when you thought I saw the light. I am. I am now more leaning toward the conservative side. What? What? What happened, or what? What point in time? Oh yeah, it was a long time coming. It was when I ran for president and saw how it really works. It's all graft and perversion to get on the ballot, and uh, you know, big money it takes a billion dollars just to lose an election. That ain't freedom. No. <clears throat> so I think we got to reconfigure a lot of stuff. But, you know, in this case, it's like I do think we're fighting for the very soul of our country. This oh, I totally agree. That's a, some of the people that I've talked to that have, are part of the walk, you know, the walk away movement. Yeah, they, he's a good friend of mine, Brandon Straka. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are, can tell you, that's why I was thinking, that, they can tell you exactly what what happened to them that they go you know i i was wrong the left is not doing this that I, they don't represent what i'm saying they're you know that that wasn't right what they did to that cop they're, they they can pin, pinpoint exact moments that they went they that they woke up that an actual like no this is wrong yeah i just saw it in steps all the way through the total corruption and you know that the <clears throat> that there's no there's no way to have 
ethics, um, you you have to uphold a certain party line. You have to uphold a certain narrative, or you won't get anywhere near it. You know. Mm -hmm. But this one, I think, is for the Constitution, the Constitutional Republic, heretofore known as the United States of America. I think. You know, uh, I like to read the Constitution. I like to read international law. And, uh, you know, I really haven't changed many of my opinions. I just thought Trump was the one who would uh, be able to deliver them more accurately and concisely and with the least amount of um, waste and pain and blood. And I still do. Yeah. Well, I, he's I think gonna make Trump, things, he's going to make things right for the American people. And that's the goal. Remember, that's why we pay taxes. Yeah. Well, I, I keep seeing things like, you know, this this election is Trump against Satan. I've, I've seen that a couple of times. This is this yeah. is, you know, and, and I do sort of feel like this is a very, very important election. You know, that this is like a turning a real turning point in America. Not, yeah, not it is. It is good about. against evil. I think it is good against evil, but you know, I'm a religious person. So, you know, I have to, I have to say those are my views. So I'm not objective. I'm a religious person. So I do think that it's a good versus evil because the United States is the last good. Um, if everybody thinks it's evil, but you know, I, I think that's not to, to say it's good is not to dismiss the bad things it's done. Um, under bad leadership but the yeah. good thing about it is that it can we we have the heart and the mind to correct the bad leadership uh, other countries don't so much their people might but their governments don't but our government it has the mind that if the people will marshal their collective will and force this government which works for us to actually solve the problems that face the humans who live in this country and pay for everything i think we can get that done and one of the things we want is uh you know why i like the uh, trump is we want our nation's black people to be included in uh the american uh, the big pie that is apportioned on the big budget table and that right. is what trump knew represents we don't want those public monies being apportioned into private pockets anymore we want those public monies to go directly to the public for fuck's sake and we want to start with uh the inner cities of every great american city where uh our our black citizens have been mk altered into in democrat run cities uh, where they can be used and abused, and we we're over that. We're not racist, and uh, that's what I think Trump's tried to show that there's a, there's a different way than the old way, the plantation economy, which we never really got rid of even during the Civil War. But Trump is people don't know this because they're too fucking stupid or brainwashed. But Trump is actually confronting the actual plantation economy of this country. The reason the civil war was fought and never really um, seen all the way through. Um, it was tried by Lincoln, by Kennedy, and you know, a couple others, but I think Trump sees it and he knows that there should be no income tax. Are you shitting me? You know. No, I don't. He's gonna do it. Like I think Trump had, you know, he he came in with this vision of like we need to fix it. We really not not just talking, not words. We really need to fix it, and that upset status quo. I mean, that's why they hate yeah. him so much because he he really wants to fix the system. Oh, they hate that. That's why they hated me on my show because I made a rule that all the writers have to go home to their families and not stay there all night you know, making me pay for their booze and their food. I said, you need to go home and take care of your kids so you can get life experience to write on a show about families. 
and not sitting here hiring Russian prostitutes behind your wife's back and eating on my dollar and drinking on it too. Go home and that's live an what... honest life. And they hated me for that, but that's what made the show good. No, you're you're right. When I when I was on the radio here in Denver doing the morning show, I I used to have to to tell my my program director that you know we needed to leave the station to go have a real life, so we would know what to talk about. Like if they just had us hanging around the station for eight hours, we're not out living. If you go do something, you have something to talk about tomorrow. You know, you right. have to have experiences, like you said, to go to know what you're talking about because. And one yeah. time he said, what's the, what's the show about tomorrow? And I go, I don't know. I might hit a deer on the way to work and the whole show bit might be about hitting a deer or, you know, you have to have life experiences and, that everybody can relate to. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Well, that, hope... that was going to say, that was one of the good things that was good about your show was you guys made everyday life uh, humorous. And I've always felt like that's, Anything, anything can be a joke. Anything you can look around your house and, and think, garbage. All right, how how come women can know when the garbage needs to go out and guys can walk past it for two days in a row? There could be something. Yeah, why is that? You know, yeah, I don't know, but that's what <laughs> I think is we're too lazy to take it out. That's all it comes down to. You guys have a weird sense of smell, I guess, because Johnny he'll leave the top of the garbage open while he's in there snacking, which I can't fucking even believe. I'm like, how can you leave the lid of the garbage open when you're three inches away from it eating out of the pantry there? Don't you smell the rotting tuna fish and shit? <laughs> <laughs> no, that just adds to our senses of being in the kitchen. Oh, maybe so. See, I don't like yeah. germs or smells or anything human anything human <laughs> that's why that's why zoom is so good you don't have to have any it, real contact see i'm thinking charge people 25 bucks a seat to gather in a church or something and then we come on zoom and we do our show in front of like that so you, you don't have any germs or covid or nothing and plus i always get the guy that uh, he doesn't think I see him scratching his ass and then going, oh, Miss Barr, I'd love to shake your hand. He thinks I don't see that, but I do. <laughs> you know, so I want to stay away from people, but then we could see them on the Zoom screen, you see. We can make fun of, we can roast them all right in front of yeah, their family. Without members, being there. Without having the germ, the COVID thing. Yeah. You know, no one's ever done that before. That might be an interesting tour of a giant, just a giant big screen in a room. That's what I tried to do on my run for president. And I get there to debate on screen because I thought, you know, as president, it's 2012. So you want to use the new media, right? Right. I said, yeah, and I'm saving money on not having to fly in, right? You're the fucking green party for fuck's sake. So, uh, <clears throat> so uh, I'd get there and they don't have no internet. So I wasn't able to debate. Ah. Uh. But then I found out there was internet, but they just said there wasn't. They just told so you. So that's how, well, you know, that's how the, they go, well, all's fair in love and war. I go, what about the fucking election? I have all the answers. I should be president. So anyway, I just declared myself president for life, like, uh, Mugabe or whatever those guys do. I'm just president for life. Well, I think you should actually, when Trump can't, like after 2020 with 24, maybe you should actually run again. But then I'll be 72 and that, uh, I mean, that's Trump's age. I might, you know how many of my ideas he, I don't want to say stole because, you know, I gave him for free. But he adopted so many of my ideas, that's why I love him. Like I said, audit the Federal Reserve. That's what needs to happen so that we know what happened to our tax money. Well, look at him. He's doing it. Yeah. He's taking but you know what happened to the last questions. Guy? But remember what happened to, didn't Kennedy want to get rid of the Federal Reserve? I know. But what do you think about JFK Jr. actually being alive? What do you think of that? They say I that. Think that's 
I know. I've I've seen those those uh, dark web rumors that he actually has been, you know, pulling the strings that he might be involved with that alphabet letter that we're not supposed to use. Yeah, everybody's saying that it is. I know. What do you, what do you think? Well, I I could think be. could be. You know, we conspiracy theories have a basis somewhere. They all. For years, used to be able to just say that's a conspiracy theory because we didn't have the internet or the technology to really to really pull it off or, or check it out. I think now we now that we know some conspiracies are true, you never know what could happen. I don't know. What do you think about the space alien stuff, like Area Fifty One? Have you seen that whole thing? But the lately about it, or just that they they do exist. Uh -huh. I, no, I'm, lately, I'm, a, I'm a believer. I, I, if you can believe that God created this earth and as much space and galaxies that we have, there's got to be, just in common sense, there has to be something else out there. Well, I hope they're smarter least, than us. Well, they gave us the cell phone. You think they gave it to us? Oh yeah, that is mind control. That came from alien back mastering or whatever they call it. What do you you know when you do the? They figured out the 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 technology, or actually, it might yeah, that may have come from aliens. That may have come from aliens because they went to the moon and then they came up with all this new shit. Mm -hmm. Do you think they really went to the moon? Some people say it was bullshit. I think they well. I'm a, I'm one of those in com, combo things because I, I like to believe that they did. But at the same time, if we did go, how come we've never been back since 1969? We didn't I'd go like back? to believe it happened. Huh? We've never gone back? I didn't know we've that. Never, we, no, we've never, you know, they did the moon landing and, and stuff all back then. But look at all the years that have passed and we've never gone up there and built a station and we never tried to figure out more about the moon it's like yeah one day we're going back but we haven't so but why haven't we if we already had that technology that's a good thought that's a lot to think about because they talk about that that halfway to the moon would be the they wanted to build a, another launch pad there to help get to Mars. That was years ago. But now they're just talking about going to Mars. Are we just going to pull another one of those stunts? Or I don't want to say stunt. They're going to be the same way. Maybe we'll go once and and call it off. Or do they want to go colonize it? What about space force? What do you think of that? I think that's awesome. I I do too. I, People were making such fun, fun of it, but I think it's it was time because of all the stuff that's going on with satellites and new technology and the things that you could do with lasers. There's no telling what, you know, might be up in space that we need to protect ourselves from. Well, because somebody told space, me that they've got satellites up there that can change the votes. <laughs> I would I would not doubt that. Whatever, you know, whatever they can put up in, in a satellite comes that's what a cell phone or all of our computers, they go to a satellite and come back. We don't know what goes up there and gets switched in a satellite and shot back to us. They said in the 2016 election, they, they might have used satellites to change the vote because it beams down to the voting machine and changes it. Now the conspiracy No, if you study about patents, it ain't no conspiracy theory. It's right there in black and white. Patents, that's where all the shit is. That's why China stole all our patents. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that's why, you know, Trump was great about saying, I'm going to do this with China. We're not letting them take, you know, intellectual properties anymore. We're going to start cutting things off. I thought that was great. Why do you think these people are all for being owned by the Chinese? How do they, how do they convince these people to vote for their own slavery to the Chinese? How are they doing that? You, how are they voting over there? You mean here? Here, getting people convinced oh, I, to vote for their own slavery to the Chinese. 
I think it's just money. I, the, the, the amount of money that comes in, you'll do whatever, you know, money is the, the power for everything. But how are they convincing the voter to vote for the Chinese lobbyists in Congress? You know, how are they getting them to vote for the Russian Chinese guy, Biden? Going, hey, you know, y'all are going to be slaves to the Chinese. Vote for me. I, I got this song on my phone. You have a song, that song on the phone? No, I mean, Biden's like, hey, here, vote for me. Look, I got this song. Vote for me oh. so you can be a slave for the Chinese. And the people yeah. are like, yay, he knows a song. I'm going to vote for being a slave to the Chinese. Well, I, I think it's it's not even people voting for Biden. I think it's voting uh, against Trump. And they're like, yeah. anybody but Trump, anybody. So what if we have to have a little, we'll give up a little bit of freedom. It's Trump is gone. That's what's scary when you see what, see the numbers of who's actually, they're saying is voting for, for Biden. You know, like he's doing well with suburban women. That's, that's not good. They're the ones raising Yeah, those kids. are the bitches on their phones not watching our kids. Bingo. Bingo. They need to go home and STFU. Boy, their hate is too strong. Their kids are picking up on it, too. It's uh -huh. not good. That's teaching you your kid to hate from. somebody who don't think like you, that's not a good thing to teach your kid. No. But well, I think I, they the think one... they're going to be destroyed. They got them so fearful, they're like, I'm voting for my life, like my life depend on it. Yeah, your life, if you want to be a fucking slave to the goddamn snake eating Chinese. Am I right? No, you are totally, you're totally right. No, you're, you're right. It, I, I think the hypocrisy. Any culture that eats a snake is fucking, I mean, I guess it's normal. We eat cows. I don't know. Bats, though, for fuck's sake. Bats. No, yes, the bats. I'm not eating a bat. Nobody that is so not kosher. It is so not kosher, a bat. You can just see it. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, you need to open a kosher bat shop. That's what Norm MacDonald said. He goes that we're all going to be going to the store and buying Beyond Bat <laughs> for our soup. <laughs> It's all scary. Mm -hmm. My dad told the, us when we were little kids, he told us, if you if you watch your P's and Q's and you're lucky, when you grow up, you're going to be able to be a gardener for the Chinese. That's what he told us, and he's fucking right. He, he really told you guys that? Yeah. Uh -huh. He said the Jews are going to be lucky if they're able to be gardeners for the Chinese. <laughs> he's right oh jesus well it's going to be up, to, I, up I hope to... we i hope we wake up and take back our government that belongs to us and go you know what i want something back from my taxes for fuck's sake like health care you motherfuckers you can still be billionaires but you don't have to be multi-billionaires you dumb fucks you owe some yeah, of that what, money. Yeah. What happened to just being okay with a little bit of profit and not just total greed? You know, the, like the, yeah, the old days when guys were running. Yeah. You didn't have to make a a uh, hundred dollars when you could have made 50, you know? Right. The, if they just but, lower their, their need and their greed just a little bit, everybody else would be okay. But, you know, they've got this need. I don't know. I think they're like. I don't even know if they're human. They might well, be alien. Well, you know, they, they might be. We should check their alien DNA. Well, you had the, the old days you used to just have to, the company made profit, but now they're all like, they, they project that what, how much are we going to make next year? What are we, what are the shareholders going to get next year? We need to project the profit instead of just being, you know, like every year our company makes money and we're okay with that. It, now it's and nobody that says that how that's much all more based. That nobody says that that's all based on race to the bottom because it's like how many how many dollars can we take away from 
you know, the cheapest labor we can get a hold of. So nobody's talking about that and that Trump wants to stop that. He doesn't want slavery. And, you know, he's going to change the stock market so that it's not built on slavery. And that's really why they hate him. I think. Well, you're probably right. You are. I am right. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am right. <laughs> no, I have no doubt in my mind. That's that's why it's called Trump Sara. There's not going to be any more child slavery at the bottom of it. Because, you know, all these capitalists and Trump knows because he's the businessman and he's at least as smart as me. I got that figured and I'm really smart. But uh, when you have real capitalism, not free cat, whatever the fuck bullshit they're calling it that means slavery. When you have real capitalism, what you do is you figure in the true cost of humanity amongst your profits, the true cost of things. <laughs> That's the difference. And Trump yeah. wants to do that. And that is moral. And if people can't figure that out, I hope my words wake them up a little. Well, the, the old days, I, I keep going back to saying the old days, but we, you know, locally, if somebody made a doorknob locally and they sold it at the local hardware store and you bought it at your local hardware store, that money stayed in your, in your neighborhood community. and in your community. You know, and that's that's what, mm -hmm. sort of what we need to get back to. It, it's not all about profit. It's about keeping everybody, keeping the money moving in your your area. You know, your your. That's work what Malcolm X said. That's what Malcolm X said. So I know he would be a Republican right now. Isn't Don't that weird? For that, but it's true. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah, it's about your you know your com community based economics, and that's what Trump means when he says. Make America great again and America first. That's what he means, idiots. You you guys are for like paying for somebody across the world who hates your fucking guts. What's wrong with you? I just don't know. I don't understand. I just want you're I all just privileged. Want to That's what's I wrong just... with you, is you're all spoiled brats. And everybody on the left, if you look that talks the loudest is a fucking trust fund brat and you can't have such a thing as billionaire socialists that doesn't exist and neither does millionaire socialists that's bullshit <laughs> it's bullshit it's an oxymoron we just want the world to live in peace we just want i everybody do too to, we want everybody to be happy we can't do that when hate speech i understand and agree so let's just solve a fucking problem for fuck's sake in our own goddamn homes watch our own fucking brats save the that's world just, watch your brats that's violence that's right there that is verbal violence okay watch your beloved children women that's how you can save the world raise up decent children if you're going to you have them. Off, are you saying get off your cell phone? Is that what you're saying? Get off your cell phone and pay attention to your kids? That's what I'm saying. That's that's an impossible goal. For 10 minutes a day, that's all it really takes. Good parenting. I got it down to it's only 10 minutes a day. That's all it is. Now, now it sounds like one of those commercials for just 10 minutes a day. You can make a better child. You can. I should make a commercial out of it. You got to have the look that it all starts there. <laughs> Man, you just made me pee in my pants. I'm so scared. Well, it has been nice talking to you. You want to give us all your particulars so we can go see you're hilarious and always make me laugh. I'm glad what? your life is happy now. Oh, me too. Well, just I'm. I always say when I do interviews, uh, just Google Steve McGrew because that's where everything comes up. Because you'll find my Larry, you'll find conserv uh, conspiracy theory Carl and Tucker the Trucker. All these characters, videos that I've been doing. So that makes it easier to find. Steve McGrew. 
Steve McGrew, McGrew yeah. my old pal, ladies and gentlemen. Good to talk to you, Steve. Back at you, Rosie. It's always great to talk to you. Love, 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 not hate, right? Love, that's what the world needs. The world needs what more the love. the world needs now is love, love. sweet love. love. You sing good. Sing it. That's the one that's oh. just too little oh. love. That's <laughs> the only thing that there's just too little love. What the world, what the world needs, needs, needs now, now is love. love. Sweet, sweet love. love. Yes. No, yes. not just one, but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another mountain. You don't know the fucking words. All I don't right. know the words. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you later, Steve. See you later, buddy. Bye, everybody. guys. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. Thanks for having me. See you around. Thanks for being.